So now that we have persisted the information, let's go ahead and see that how we can do the actual conversion from Kelvin to Fahrenheit or Kelvin to Celsius. Since the web service itself always returns you Kelvin, so we can be sure that our temperature reading will always be Kelvin. So let's go ahead and do the conversion. I'm going to go and jump into the weather view model. And over here you can see that the weather view model simply contains or takes in a weather model and returns you different properties. Perfect. In order to do the conversion, we're going to go ahead and use or create a function called get temperature by unit, in which you can go ahead and pass in a unit, we will call it temperature unit, and it is going to return you double. We can go ahead and perform a switch on the unit, and now if it is Kelvin, then we can simply return the temperature that we have because we know that the temperature that we have is also in Kelvin. So weather or temperature, that's already Kelvin because the web service returns you Kelvin. If it is Celsius, then we will have to do some calculation. We can say weather or temperature, which is in Kelvin, minus 273.15, which is going to convert from Kelvin to Celsius. This formula, if you simply type on Google how to convert from Kelvin to Celsius or Kelvin to Fahrenheit, you will be easily be able to find this formula. Finally, we have Fahrenheit itself. And in order to convert to Fahrenheit, we will go ahead and multiply by 1.8, which will be multiplied by weather dot temperature minus 273. And then we will add 32 to it. That's the formula to convert Kelvin into Fahrenheit. So now we have a get temperature unit, which will allow us to convert whatever that we pass in, it's going to allow us to convert from one to the other. One thing to note is that it always works on the Kelvin temperature. So you can see over here that even if you're going from Celsius to Fahrenheit, it's always going to take into account the temperature that was in Kelvin and then going to perform the subtraction or addition or multiplication based on the formula. So we didn't really have to implement maybe like six or nine different cases when you can go from Kelvin to Celsius, Kelvin to Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit to Celsius, Celsius to Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit to Kelvin. We don't have to do that. We already have a baseline temperature of Kelvin and we can just perform this based on that Kelvin temperature. Another thing to note over here is that we're not really changing the temperature variable itself. We are simply returning a new value without changing the original value, which is always in Kelvin. So now that we already have the get temperature by unit function, the next task for us would be to use this and to display the temperature on the screen. So let's go ahead and learn that in the next lecture. Now let's go ahead and talk about that how we can perform the conversion from one unit to the other and also update our interface. Now one of the things that we have to do is inside the store global state object. Over here you can see that we have created our selected unit and by default we're providing it a Kelvin value. But we also were saving the value to our user defaults. That is what we did in our settings screens. Whenever the value was assigned to the selected unit, it was actually stored in the user defaults. So whatever the value is assigned, is gonna go to the app storage, which is basically user defaults. So whenever we are fetching the value from the store and getting the selected unit, we should always get that from the user defaults. We can go ahead and initialize, perform an initializer, and then we can say selected unit equals to user defaults dot standard dot unit, which is an extension that we created so that we can easily get the 
value. Now, if you go to the user defaults extension, you can see that the extension doesn't really do much. It returns you the user defaults. It reads the value from the unit. And if it doesn't exist because maybe you haven't stored anything, then we simply set it to Kelvin. Else, we set it to whatever the value is. We try to convert it and we try to return the value. All right. Now let's go to the weather app. You can see there's nothing going on in the weather app also. We haven't really added any default value or anything. We just created our store and we're sending the value over here. So whenever there is no value in the user defaults, we will store Kelvin. If there is a value, uh, then we will return that value, whether the value is Kelvin, Fahrenheit or Celsius. So now let's go back to our weather list screen. This is responsible for displaying all the weather. And inside the weather list screen, let's go ahead and find the place where we're displaying the temperature. So right over here in the weather cell, we are displaying the temperature. This means that it will always display the temperature, which is in Kelvin, because we are simply using weather.temperature. So first thing first, we need to change that. We don't want to display the weather from the weather dot temperature property, we want to call the function, which is get temperature unit. And now we can go ahead and pass in the unit, which is store dot selected unit. Unfortunately, inside the weather cell, there is no such thing as store. So we have to go ahead and say that, hey, we also want the access to the store object, which means store and store. Now we can get the actual store object. We will get the selected value. For the prefix, we want to make sure that we are using the correct prefix. So not Kelvin all the time. We should be able to use something else. You can use a different way of displaying this value. And for us, we're going to use a string function. And inside the string function, I can pass in store.selected unit dot display text, but I only want to select one particular item. So there we go. So it's going to select Fahrenheit, so F, Celsius for C, and Kelvin, K. Let's go ahead and try it again now. We're going to go ahead and run the application and try to go ahead and add something. Let's go ahead and see if it runs. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and enter Houston over here and it says 294, which is in Kelvin. Let's go to the settings screen and select Fahrenheit. Now it's changed to 71, which is Fahrenheit, which is great. Let's go ahead and change it to Celsius. And now this is Celsius. Let's go ahead and add a different temperature. So I'm gonna go ahead and put Boston and save. And you can see that when you add a particular temperature, for Boston, it is already in Celsius because we converted it to Celsius. If I go ahead and add other temperature for different cities like Denver, all of them are in Celsius. I can go ahead and change it to Fahrenheit because in US we use Fahrenheit. And now you can see that it has now converted it into Fahrenheit. I can even go ahead and change it to Kelvin, but I mean, I don't think you will use Kelvin when you are dealing with the temperature. I mean, it's more of a scientific reading, definitely, but I think you will go with either Fahrenheit or Celsius. So there you go. We have created our complete weather application. This is getting the weather from Open Weather Map API. So make sure that you have an API key, because if you try to use my API key, it's not going to work. So please make sure that you're creating your own API key, very important. We use the MVVM design pattern. We use our own image loader and our own URL image to display the images. One thing that you can do with this placeholder, and that's your homework, is instead of using a placeholder like a white image over here, you can use actually a very small image or a clear image or some sort of a loading sign so that you don't see that white image being displayed when the weather is or the image is being loaded like an actual cloud image or whatever the unit is. 
So there you have it. I really hope that you have enjoyed these two new sections I've added to the course. Make sure to download the code and also make sure to invest maybe two minutes of your time to rate and review the course. Your rating and review is extremely important and it allows me to add new content, pay the bills, and create new courses. Thank you so much and thank you so much for your continuous support.